Alex Score brought to you by KM. As long as there's KM, there's summer. Arbella Insurance and Zenny, the official eyewear of the Boston Red Sox. Major League style and minor league prices. Visit Zenny.com. Uh, hello, Mr. Core. How are you today? Good. How are you? Terrific. Oh, on. You okay? Yeah, yeah. Let me close the door. Okay. There's a lot of people walking around. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. Sorry to interrupt. Hold on. Let me guess. <laughs> Let me guess. There are a couple of cutouts outside your manager's office, right? Spring training. So. Like, like, <laughs> there's a lot of them. A lot of them all over the place, yeah. So yeah. Let, me ask, let me ask you this uh, first question, because you talked about going to Texas, full crowds, coming to Bas back to Boston, a very small crowd, and you said it was day and night. So how is it from Fenway Park with some fans versus a bunch of cutouts and a few people scattered around in Dunedin, Florida, a minor league complex? It, it, it felt like that first night against Detroit coming from Texas. Uh, I think at Fenway, the last, the last two series with more fans, uh, you, you can feel, uh, you know, the, the, the fans and – and the atmosphere a lot different, and then you got here, and it was different. But uh, you know that's not an excuse. We just uh, they they were amazing yesterday, putting the ball in play and getting hits, and uh, at least we know what we're gonna run into it, right? So uh, we have no no excuses. We gotta show up today and and play a better game. Alex, was that hard just driving in there? I was just thinking, like you know, in, in players' mind, when you go to Dunedin, it's spring training, right? And you look around, spring training atmosphere. And it just sort of felt like, especially after that basketball didn't get out, the wind's gusting, right? It just seemed like the air came out of that team. Was it? Did it just make it hard just playing there? Um, I don't want to say that. You know, like like I said, they did an amazing job with the facility. The clubhouse is uh, probably better than than some places at the <laughs> at the in some big league stadiums. Wow. But uh, it's just different. It's just different, and uh, this is something that uh, we talk about it. Uh, on the way here on Monday, we talked about it yesterday in the meeting. At the end of the, get, the, get, uh, at the, end of the day, they're big league games and they count, right? And uh, right now, if you look at our division, you know, they have the best record at home. The Jays do. And, uh, you know, they do a good job here going the other way, hitting line drives, not getting caught up in the whole thing. And, uh, you know, they, they, they play well. Uh, even their defensive alignments are a lot different than, than usual. You know, the, at one point they had Gurriel. Uh, almost playing behind the shortstop when Rafi was up. So uh, they're doing a good job adjusting to it. So we got two days to do that and try to win the series. Let me ask you about Erod because I'm just curious. Is this just a guy that didn't pitch all year and is still trying to kind of find it and put it together? Or is there something else going on? Is it because this power one game, there's no location. And obviously last night there wasn't a location. I mean, they put 19 balls in play. They got 11 hits. So... Uh, I don't want to say luck was a factor, but that rarely happens, you know. And uh, I think if if you look at it, that that walk to to Jensen in the fourth inning put us in a bad spot. Then after that, a blue single by Simeon, uh, then the ball double by Bichette. I, I do believe his fastball up in the zone was a good one yesterday. His cutter wasn't great; it actually played more like a like a hanging slider. And uh, they did a good job with it. I, I, I do believe he's trending up uh, with his fastball. His changeup is going to be his changeup regardless, right? He's, he's going to be a good one. So, uh, you know, hopefully for the next one, you know, his location is a lot better. His cutter uh, is smaller instead of the big one, and uh, he can have a good one. Alex, we know that you've won a World Series. You've had some great times as a manager. You've had some tough times as a manager. But I have to imagine managing this team – which, I mean, Bogarts is a superstar. He just doesn't act like one. But seems to me to be just really good baseball players. How much fun and how easy is it to manage this group? Uh, it's fun and it's not easy. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very solid group. But at the same time, you know, with all the moving parts, you got to make sure, you know, they're healthy. They're getting their work in in different positions. And uh, we got to find the right mix on a daily basis. Uh, but uh, the way they go about their business is, is amazing. One one thing that I really like, although we didn't like the result on Sunday, right? You know, the bloop and the blast against the Angels. Uh, I walked into the clubhouse after the game, and it, it it felt like a winning team. You know what I mean? Like, hey, well, we got beat. We won the series. We got to move on. And uh, that's the mark of a good team. Uh, sometimes you get caught up on the daily 
thing. You win a game and you get emotional, you know, you're high, high, and then you lose a game and you, 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 you mop around and you put your head down. Well, this team is not doing that. And uh, I like this. You know, we, we had some good stretches, right? We won nine in a row at one point. Then we played 500 baseball. Then we got hot again. Uh, yesterday we, we, we got beat, but uh, you see them around today. It's like nothing. And that's the mark of a good team. It's interesting. You told us before the season began, you thought this was a good team. I've heard players now in the last couple of weeks being emphatic about it. Uh, Martin Perez last week said, we're an effing good team. Uh, uh, Kiki, <laughs> right, you probably heard that. Kiki came out and I think he said, we're a lot better than anybody thought we were. You just talked about the attitude of this team. Is that part of the motivation behind closed doors? Are they hearing from the outside that maybe they're not going to be in the mix and they're saying, F you. As Martin Perez said, we are good. We're going to be in the mix. Um, I've been telling that from the get go, and uh, you no, know, it's just something that that I believe. Uh, I, I did believe the, the the pitching staff was a lot better than what people thought. Uh, you start looking around the league and, and our rotation, and we got five guys that you know it, some of them have upside, some of them have a track record, some of them are veterans that are going to give you innings. And that's what you need. Uh, obviously, people get caught up in, in, in 18 here with David and, and, and Chris and Porcello, uh, you know, Eduardo, Drew. You know, you, you have the big names, and yeah. they did an amazing job. But I think, you know, like I said, stuff-wise, we're, we're pretty solid, and, and, and they do a job. And, and I think defensively, we're a lot better than what people thought we were going to be. You know, our catcher is plus four. In defense, is run saves. Our third baseman is at even. You know, and then, you know, he, that's solid. Uh, you know, Bogey, obviously, he, he will always, you know, get negative numbers at shortstop. We we, we got to find why. But, uh, you know, Enrique and Hunter and Marwin, they're just good players that even when we're not hidden, you know, we, we can play good defense and stay in games. And then, you know, Rafi might hit one out or Bobby. So it's just a good baseball team that has to work on a daily basis to win uh, big league games, but we we feel very comfortable with who we are, and um, you know the the whole what people think. I don't know. I, I saw Martin saying that. Um, hey, if, if they like that and they use that as a motivation, so be it. But from my end, it wasn't about motivation. It was just being honest. You know, I do, I do believe we have a good team, but at the same time. I do believe we have to keep working and keep getting better. Alex, a lot of Red Sox fans kind of see what's going on down in Worcester with this kid, Jared Duran. And and I know how valuable that time is in AAA probably because I spent so much time there. But um, <laughs> people ask me all the time, like, what what can he learn in two more months if you give him two months or two and a half, three months? So I'll ask you that question. You answer it then because I can't keep doing it. So what can Duran learn if he spends another two, three months down in AAA that he doesn't already know? More repetitions in center field, more repetitions in the outfield, um, you know, play discipline, put in the little play in certain situations, uh, become a better base runner. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes on, you know. Um, you know, get hard and then struggle and then see how you react when you struggle because at one point at the big league level, you're going to go 0 for 25. And, uh, you know, are you able to, to do that? And uh, that's part of play development. Uh, he hasn't competed. I mean, he competed back home, but at, in Puerto Rico. But you know, that's not even close to what he's competing now. You know, game planning against him. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. But he's getting better. He's working hard. Uh, he's a good player. He's a guy that you know we believe he's going to be a solid big league player, and uh, he's going to do his job. But at the same time, we have to be patient. Well, I don't know how much you're involved with, with AAA or your philosophy or if you're in any of those meetings, but it seems to me that the luxury of the big league team playing so well is you can be patient because you don't have people like Lou and Glenn, I would never do such a thing, uh, screaming for these guys being called up. I mean, I'm serious. I mean, Alex has been around long enough. I mean, Louie, you know it. I mean, we're freaking, we're terrible. I mean, we see some guy playing well at AAA, and if the big league club is struggling, we, you know, we're screaming. So as long as the big club plays well... You got guys like Hauk. You know, I know that he's been hurt. You don't have to rush him. You don't have to rush these kids. You don't have to rush any of these guys. And I would assume that's a huge luxury. Yes, and and, and one thing that uh, you know, I, I love what we did in the off season. Um, we we got better at the big league level, and we got better 
as far as uh, the minor leagues, right? We we got some good players, and uh, to do both things at the same time, you know, it's a testament of where we at as an organization. Heim and the group, you know, they they've been amazing, and 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 for us to be able to to do this here and and keep playing good baseball, and those guys, like you said, you know, keep developing and keep getting better. I mean, that that's kind of like perfect, right? And uh, we know that at one point. They're gonna they're gonna contribute. They're gonna contribute. Uh, we had some guys already coming up, and, and they did the job. And uh, that's what it's all about. It takes more than 26 guys to win a World Series, and um, you know some of these guys they they they're gonna be here at one point. Uh, pitchers, position players, and they have to contribute. They have to 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 do the job here and play development and and doing the things that they're doing right now. Uh, oh, Dolis to the IL. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I just saw that. Uh, Dolis? It's, it's what it's all about. Dolis, yeah, Good Dolis. Don't watch him anymore in the ninth. God, he put you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> was, was, was that breaking news? Did, did we just get a scoop, Lou? Was that something? That's the last thing I needed in that game last night. I'm sure you were thinking the same thing. Really? going to bring this guy in now? It's 8 <laughs> Uh, it took forever, man. <laughs> oh, my God. We're talking to Alex Carr. All right, you got to help me out with this one. I have no idea what the hell Tony La Russa is doing, and if I were a player in the Chicago White Sox, I don't think I'd be happy about this. So I'm going to, instead of allowing you to uh, to uh, critique to La Russa, I'm going to put you in the, in the manager's seat. Um, would you have a problem if one of your players, late in a game in a blowout, positional player comes in to pitch, uh -oh. 47 mile per hour meatballs Don't answer it, up Alex. there Don't answer it. on a 3 and o count. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll, do, I'll do the Joe Girardi. It's a setup. Oh, no, it's stop, a setup. Don't, don't do that. Alex, don't he's going to screw you. He's going to screw don't you, Alex. Alex no, let me ask you a question, Alex, because i got a problem with this. Number one. <laughs> Oh, You're I'm a hitter. Sorry. We just hijacked your question. No, you know, but it's true. It's because he doesn't want to go there, right? He loves Tony. I get it. Yeah. But I'm a hitter. I'm we, working you know, one zero. I tried to bail you out of Tony. No, no, no. But uh, we we talk about this in in 19 at one point, and you guys asked me about uh, position players pitching, right? Yeah. And uh, I think it was a game. I think we were up five. I want to say. And they brought in a position player, not this year. It was in 19, and you guys asked me. And and as a manager, in that situation, it's very hard because you still have to manage your game, right? I mean, it's only a five-run lead. And, and your hitters, although they like facing position players, but sometimes they don't, right? Like the other day, we faced a position player, and he got three outs right away, boom, 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 boom. And then you got to use your pitchers, and you still have to manage the game, and they have a chance to come back. I always said that if you bring a position player, this, is, this should be like the end of the conversation of the controversy. If a team brings a position player to pitch, right, it's kind of like waving the, the white flag, right? Yeah. So the, the team that brings a position player, when they're at offense, they don't swing. They don't swing the bat. That's fine. You just throw fastballs, and if you if you one two three boom, you don't swing the bat. You don't have a chance to win the game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's it's very hard when they come in. The White Sox did it to us early in the season. They they came in. They brought in uh, oh the uh, German. He pitched right. Yes. And it was a six run game at Fenway, and we were like, oh, so so how we go about this? You know, like you're trying to win the game, but we have to like stop playing. I don't know, man. It's, it's one of those that uh, I'm glad that in Boston. Hey, it was, it was, it, it, by it, the way, it was in the seventh that, inning. Yeah, seventh in that inning, game, that Alex, game. by the way, in that game, down, you know, up six, Franchi actually stole a base. And I had no problem with yeah. it. Because to me, the unwritten rules are dumb once you bring in a position player. You had no problem stealing up up six with a position player, right? Franchi stole, tried to steal a bag that game, right? Or did? Yeah, and they. it was, it was interesting because – um, I think they, they we brought in Whitlock, right? And uh, Anderson was the first. It was first and third and one out. And Anderson took off and he stole second. So he's second and third, one out. They score one more run and then we look and they brought the position player and you're like, okay, so where we go now? You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you tried they to just, steal. They just played the game in the top of the seventh. So do we have to stop playing because... We're up five, or it, it, it's complicated. I think it's a lot different. I think compared to to back in the day. I, well, you you didn't see so many position players pitching. 
No, it's and, a, uh, that's yeah. something that is, is is a lot different. You know, we got we got 14 pitchers, and if we have to use a position player, it has to be in a very very bad spot that we play extra. I mean, we use everybody the night before, and they're just crushing us, and we have five more games in a row, and and, and that's where you bring them. And but it's, it's it's just hard. You know, I think the the whole thing that probably makes it worse is is uh, you know the back and forth between the players and 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 the manager. You know, that's that's a hard one to to deal with. And uh, you know, just watching from afar. Uh, you know, I'm glad that I'm here. <laughs> we don't have to deal with that situation right now. And uh, I leave it at that. Well, I'll so, say I'll say this that uh, and I said it at the time. You either forfeit the game at the time, or you have the two managers go out there and pitch. And you didn't like that answer. But I would say this. I, yeah, I, I, I like. I, I like Tony. I can't believe that a manager would come out there and said he's fine with the Twins throwing at his player. I'm, I'm, I'm I never thought I would ever hear yeah, that. He's lost his from mind. a manager, yeah, and I like that. I like Tony. I I know what he's yeah, accomplished yeah. over his career. I mean, are you a little stunned? Would you ever say that? Uh, no, no. To, to be honest with you, no. Uh, yeah, I would never say that. Even if sometimes I'll agree with it, I just hit this guy. You know, he's been a pain in the ass the last two weeks for me. Just hit him. But no, no, I would never say that. Just joking. No, no, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. You know, at the end of the day, um, you know, these are my players, you know, the Red Sox. And and, and, the, and you have to, to, to take care of them, not only on the field, but also uh, through the eyes of the fan base and also the media, you know. And uh, I do believe... And with all the respect, you know, because I love Tony. He he's amazing. He was amazing to me here. Uh, I think you know that was a that was a mistake. Yeah, I'm amazed. All right, at least you were honest about it. Go uh, enjoy the cutouts in Dunedin tonight, and hopefully, uh, the wind has died down a little bit. Good luck tonight. Okay, take care. See you guys tomorrow. Uh, See, talk to you next week. You got all it. Right, See Alex. you later, Alex Cora on the Harbor One Hotline.